Well, hello everybody. Welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. My name is Paul DC, your instructor, and this is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Well, at the time of this taping, which is the 10th of February 2021, just five days till my birthday, we are at 949 subscribers. My goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers by my birthday. That's only 51 more. So if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. I know when we say subscribe, some people think it might cost something. It is absolutely free. It does not cost you one single penny. All right, this week's lesson will be a follow-up to last week's lesson. Now, last week's lesson was episode 48. It was called Garnet 101, all the basics about Garnet. It is currently tracking as the most watched video that I have uh, taped to date. This is going to be a little bit of a mini series on some of those individual varieties of garnet that I brought up in the last lesson. All right, so this week's lesson will be on almondine garnet. Sometimes it is called almondite garnet. It is the most common and familiar of the garnet group of gemstones. In fact, if you ever purchased in your life a piece of jewelry with a garnet gemstone in it, very likely the variety of that garnet was the almondine garnet. It tends in color from red to brown, sometimes even tending to purple. And that's because it sometimes uh, is mixed with other groups where you get a little bit more of that purple coloration. But when you think about the traditional red color you think about in today's garnet, we're talking about the almondine. Now the name almondine comes from the Latin word carbunculus uh, alabandicus. No, there will not be a, a spelling quiz on this uh, because it comes from a Latin word. Now, carbunculus was a word in Latin that meant small coal, like a small lump of coal because it had that spark, that, that fire inside of there. And alabandicus refers to the city of Alabanda, not Alabama, Alabanda, where the Omdine gemstone was traded at the time. Now, what, what, where was Alabanda? It was an ancient city that was located in the area we now associate with the country of Turkey, which is also kind of interesting, and this is what happens in the gem world sometimes. Uh, a lot of times when you think about turquoise, turquoise got its name because it was in reference to what they called the Turkish stone. And the Turkish stone was called the Turkish stone because it was a major trading route in Europe and Asia was, you know, Istanbul, Turkey. So basically, turquoise was never discovered in the country of Turkey, but they called it the Turkish stone because that's where it was traded. Well, similarly, that's what happened with garnet because that's where this alabandicus uh, carbunculus stone was traded in that major trade route. So it became associated with the name of the city and that's where almondine eventually came, with, uh, came from. By the way, when we talk about that Latin name, we talked about the origin of it, but we didn't talk about who actually brought it up. And that was a, a guy by the name of Pliny the Elder. And he's credited with writing probably the first ever book on gemstones. I cover that in the lesson. It's one of the earlier lessons. I'll put the number up there if I remember to do so. Uh, and that was the history of gemstones. And we talked a lot about Pliny the Elder in that particular lesson. Okay, so now we're going to get to that part that I call the vital statistics. So what do you need to know about the almondine variety of garnet to kind of separate it from the others? Well, remember, every gem has physical, chemical, and optical properties that make it unique. And that's how you determine what is a pyrope garnet versus what is a, an almondine garnet. Well, almondine garnet, uh, first of all, is the birth sum, well actually all garnet, is the birth sum for the month of January. So if you're born in January, regardless of the color of the garnet, that is your birthstone. And also, if you're celebrating anniversaries, this would be the gemstone considered for the second wedding anniversary. So if you're celebrating something, you can give your wife a garnet piece of jewelry and then impress her with your knowledge that it is in, indeed the second anniversary uh, gemstone. The zodiac stone, for those of you that believe in that, is for Aquarius. Now, not only is that personal to me because I was born on February 15th, but 
So maybe that is what, one of the reasons that I do love growing it so much. But that's, that's for January 21st. If you're born between January 21st and February 21st, this would be your zodiac stone. Now the chemical composition, if you watch that Garnet 101, we talked about how a lot of different varieties or species of Garnet will have a slightly different chemical composition. By the way, what you're hearing is boats going by on the intercoastal waterway behind me. But this one has a chemical composition of iron, aluminum, silicate. And if you remember during uh, Garnet 101, I put up a little chart that showed what they called the um, aluminum group versus the calcium group. So this first one that we're talking about, which is the almondine garnet, will be from the aluminum group. So it's an iron aluminum silicate. And in interestingly, iron also adds a little bit of that red to red orange color, which you will see in some of the subsequent lessons of the different colors of garnet that we're going to get to. So the crystal structure would be cubic. And that's how you'd be able to identify from other crystal structures and other gemstones to know that it is, in fact, a garnet. Now, the hardness would be between seven and seven and a half on the Mohs scale of hardness. Now, remember, the Mohs scale of hardness literally is the ability from, for one gem to scratch another gem. Seven to seven and a half is very, very good. In fact, uh, quartz, which is a, certainly an everyday gem that you can wear, is seven on the Mohs scale of hardness. Now, remember, other varieties of garnet might be a little less than that, and, and we talked about that, and again, in the Garnet 101, episode 48. The refract, or the toughness. The toughness, uh, different than the hardness, the toughness is the ability to withstand cracking or chipping or falling apart altogether. And it's rated fair to good on the toughness scale. So that would put it in the same league with other gemstones that are comfortably worn every single day. Now we get into the refractive index. Now remember the refractive index measures the sparkle of a gemstone. And this is where it really shines, no pun, well, I guess maybe it was a pun intended. It's 1.76 to 1.83. Now remember, when we think of the most sparkly gemstones, a diamond comes to mind, that's a 2.42. Next would be your zircon, which is a natural gemstone. That's in the like 1.9 range. Rubies, I think, can approach that too. So garnet is right up there with some of the most sparkle that you can get in a gemstone, and the price is much, much less than you would expect. Finally, the specific gravity. What is the specific gravity? That is the heft of the gemstone. How heavy does it feel? The way that I talk about this, and maybe even in uh, one of my earlier lessons, if you ever bought like a, a box of cereal, I know you're thinking, Paul, what are you talking about a box of cereal? This is a gem lesson. Well, it says, it gives you a weight and it says this package is sold by weight not by volume now there's a difference between weight and volume when it comes to gemstones too well the specific gravity is 4.2 what does that mean well the specific gravity of a sapphire or a ruby is four and when you get into the almondine coming in at 4.2 that means that if you had uh, a, a, a one carat garnet and a one carat ruby, the garnet would actually be smaller than the ruby because it's more dense, it's heavier. So it's, it's something I talk about in the earlier lessons too, how that has practical applications in choosing gemstones. For example, if you're choosing an earring, You'd probably want to have a shell or a, like amber. Amber is a specific gravity of just about 1, 1.03, I think, or something like that. That means it's not going to, you can have a big piece that's not going to be heavy in your ears. So that's one of the practical applications of that. Treatments, this is my favorite part about all of the garnet group, but also with the almondine. There are no treatments whatsoever. That means no heat treating, no dyeing, no irradiating, no fracture filling. It is a completely natural, untreated gemstone and incredibly affordable at that. So that's one of the things that I do love about it. Now, where is this found? Well, it's found uh, in many, many places on Earth, but the most important 
sources would be number one, Brazil, number two, India. I happen to not really like the Indian garnet anywhere compared to the Brazilian garnet. Uh, Madagascar, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and the United States. Now you might want to uh, want to learn that uh, specifically rhodolite garnet was first discovered in the United States of America, and there's also a big deposit of pyrope garnet in Arizona, and it's called Ant Hill Garnet, and we're going to get to that in a future lesson. Well, this has been a specific mini series lesson on one variety of garment, uh, gar uh, garnet called the almondine garnet. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. Remember, it says subscribe, but there is no subscription cost. It doesn't cost you a penny. So hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next week when we continue with our mini series and we get into probably my favorite garnet of all, or at least tied for first, and that will be the pyrope garnet. See you next week, everybody. Mm -hmm.